Today, an Oz true crime exclusive. Who killed John Benet Ramsey? That question has been one of the great mysteries of the past 22 years. Since John Benet was killed in 1996, these images of the young pageant contestant have been etched in our brains. Today, an exclusive interview with a man who says he knows who killed John Benet. But can we believe him? John Benet Ramsey, the six year old beauty queen forever etched into our minds as the haunting face of the country's most baffling murder mystery. It's been over 20 years since her small body was discovered by her father in the basement of their sprawling Boulder, Colorado home. Beaten, bound, abused, and strangled to death rendering the rambling three-page ransom note left behind pointless and even more bizarre. Today, more than two decades later, John Binet's murder remains unsolved, despite extensive investigations and theories that have focused on a variety of suspects, someone inside the house, intruders, even international pedophiles. But all leads have led nowhere, and her killer has never been brought to justice. Now, music publicist Michael Vale claims his high school pal, convicted pedophile Gary Oliva, has confessed multiple times to killing John Benet. Could John Benet's killer already be behind bars? Crime Online founder Nancy Grace joins me now. Some folks are calling this a bombshell report. Please break it down for us. What is Michael Vale alleging that Gary Oliva, his friend, lifelong friend, has told him? Well, Michael Vale has been having a pen pal relationship with his high school friend, Gary Oliva, for years. But before I say who Michael Vale is, let me tell you who Gary Oliva is. Gary Oliva is who you do not want to meet in a dark alley one night. You don't want to pull over at a truck rest stop on the interstate and see him get out of the car, okay? Just his, okay, there he is, whoa. He looks <laughs> like uh, out of one of those scary movies. And for a reason. He is a convicted pedophile, mm -hmm. and I forced myself from my meeting with you right now to look up the details of his previous convictions of crimes on children. Uh, not only a child molester, but he's into child pornography. Mm -hmm. So what makes him remotely interesting is that he was living very close to the Ramsey home December 25, 1996. Okay, very close. And of course, he raised his eyebrows. Now, Michael Vale went to high school with him. Yep. And they have a pen pal relationship. And he writes in one letter that he killed John Bonet. And here's another interesting thing. It's not just the letter, Dr. Oz. According to Michael Vale, mm -hmm. Oliva calls him on December 26 and says, I think I hurt a little girl crying. Ooh. That, in 1996. And according to Michael Vale, these letters are from Oliva. And according to Michael Vale, he reported it to the police and it was not followed up on. So I believe that the police were following a different theory and his tip got lost in the sauce. Does that make it true? No. Does that make it false? No. But it could have been uh, resolved much better had it been addressed at that time. You're a prosecutor, very respected prosecutor. If you're going after Gary Oliva, trying to argue to a jury that he was guilty for killing John Benet Ramsey, how would you handle it? Well, you put me between a rock and a hard spot right now because I'm not convinced Oliva did kill John Benet Ramsey, but I do believe Gary Oliva is worth intense investigation. You do? Yes, I do. I'm worried about him. All right, coming up, are we closer to solving the murder of John Benet Ramsey? This man says he has the confession letters and phone recordings to prove who killed her. We'll see those letters and hear one of those calls. That is next. It was three years ago, the morning after Christmas, when the body of the six-year-old was discovered in the family's basement by her father. To this day, the parents are suspected in the crime, but they maintain their innocence. There is also reportedly some evidence which points to an outside intruder. But officially, investigators have said little about what they may know. It has been 22 years since the murder of John Benet Ramsey. Today we're talking about the new bombshell reports alleging a man in prison has confessed to killing her. 
Michael Vail claims his friend Gary Oliva confessed to him on the phone and in letters that he is John Bidet's killer. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate you coming forward. You've been friends with Gary Oliva for 40 years. That's right. It's a long time. Why mm -hmm. should we believe that your friend, your lifelong friend, is a murderer? Well, I've known him for 40 years, and you know, you got to look at the facts. And the facts are is that uh, proximity. He was uh, three houses down from John Bonet's house. He used to drink alcohol in the alley where she used to ride her bicycle. Mm -hmm. In fact, on Christmas Day, she was riding her bicycle in that alley. And and um, are there things he has done with you in the past outside of this case that made you suspicious of him? And how did you yeah, come it, to learn that there was a potential connection? It was very disturbing in high school, and, and we, after high school, we went our separate ways. Oh, well, well, I want to hear that. Oh, you yeah. just can't throw it out there. He was disturbing in high school, not <laughs> tell me what he did. What did he do? Well, he would, he would make, create art, and then he would destroy it. And he would have these fits and go running down the what street. What kind of art? Uh, you know, uh, one time he made this collage, and we, we went our separate ways. We're making our collage. And when I looked at his collage, it was all little girls on it. I said, you ruined your collage. You put little girls all over it. I was angry with him. Now, see, that means something to me, Dr. Yeah. Oz. In high school, he's making collages of little girls. Yep. And also drawing things like eyeballs on a fork. Okay. I almost wish I hadn't asked, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. okay. And, he, and then he would destroy these artworks. Yeah, he so. would get so mad. He would either burn it or rip it up and tear it up. And I'd be like, what are you doing? It was, it, very disturbing. After high school, we went our separate ways, but for 16 years, he mailed me letters. So, part of the reason I know you came forward was mm -hmm. not just to get justice for John Bonet, because I'm going to come back to right. specifically what, the, what issues are here, but there's another critical time limit to your coming forward. Right. There's a possibility that he might be able to get out on parole, and that possibility is terrifying to me, that he could get out and actually hurt another little girl. But I'm feeling that by putting spotlight on this, by putting the heat on this, we could actually keep him in prison for longer. Right. Educate everybody about the phone call you received before anybody else knew that John Bonet had been murdered. Right, right. For uh, 16 years, I received letters from Gary, no phone calls. And all of a sudden, December 26, 1996, I get this terrifying phone call. It's I, uh, that he, he hurt a little girl. And I'm like, what? And the light bulb went on my head. I go, oh, it all makes sense now. I'm like, what's your address? What's your phone number? Where are you? And he caught on to me and hung up. So on the 27th, I went to get the LA Times off my newspaper, uh, the newspaper off my porch. And here it is on the front page, girl six slain in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm like, I called the number immediately in, in the article. Nothing happened. Well, before we get to, the, to, the, to, to why it wasn't followed up on, I know you had questions about the, the specifics of this call. You're a prosecutor. I do, so. I do. And mm -hmm. guys, bear with me, because I really believe the devil is in the details, and I got a question. Um, here's my question. Mm -hmm. you tell, you're telling me he lived three houses down from the Ramsey home. Is There's that a, there was a church right down the alley yeah. from the Ramsey's house. Where homeless house. people would hang out. And the homeless people would hang out there and drink. In fact, Gary was appointed to paint the small building behind now, there. Now, this is something I think we need to take into account. When we say, wow, how did he know before it was broadcast? Well, he was a couple of blocks or less from the Ramsey home, which was cordoned off with yellow crime scene tape. There were 20, 30 vehicles, all police, ambulance, detectives there. He was there on the scene. He's been having delusions and impulses about little girls since he was in high school, putting their eyeballs mm -hmm. on a fork. So he sees that, and 24 hours later, he calls you and goes, I heard a little girl. Right, and at the time of John Bonet's murder, he was on the run from Oregon from assaulting a little child, a six-year-old mm -hmm. girl in right. Oregon in 1990. So the fact that he's on the scene and sees all of the activity, in my mind, he knows from being there on the street, what happened. So that call doesn't really grab me that much. And I wonder if that's why the police did not follow up on it or if they just didn't get to it, which would be much worse. So what's the story here? Why, 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 do, why do you think they didn't follow up on what sounds like a credible lead? Yes, it might not be accurate. Can I be blunt? Yes. They were not equipped. Some people would say they were inept. They screwed up. They should have followed up. All of that may be true, but if you look at the police in the best light possible, 
They were overwhelmed and deluged. I don't think it was intentional. I don't think it's a bad cop. I don't think it's part of a conspiracy. I think they just did not get to it. And what finally got them serious about Gary Oliva? A stun gun, wouldn't you say? A stun gun, the fact that he was at the one year anniversary of John Bonet's death. Uh, he was at the vigil. He went to the vigil. Candlelight vigil. And we know that, I mean, look at Scott Peterson. Look at so many others. They actually go on the searches for missing people, the killers do, or they show up at the vigils. It's some creepy impulse that they cannot avoid. He came to the vigil and that stirred interest. Then he pops up with a stun gun in his backpack. And, and he's got a secret box uh, stuffed with John Bonet photos. He's got artwork of John Bonet drawings. Uh, just this fascination. Well, he which had about almost... at some point. Now remember, this was several. This was years, at least one year after John Bonet, and the stun gun was several years after John Bonet. There's been a theory all along that John Bonet was subdued with a stun gun. I disagree. The careful reading of John Bonet's autopsy report reveals abrasions. A stun gun leaves an electrical burn. You could speak to that better than me. Very, very different. The burns are much deeper, and, mm. and they are traditionally left by stun guns. Although it is interesting, it was one of the hypotheses, and he was just bring us up to date on this. So when when they when they first, why do they why do they catch him with a stun gun? Well, I've been in touch with detectives on this case for the last uh, 20 years. And, and um, when they caught him with a stun gun and uh, one of the detectives had, had uh, took a, a pig carcass and actually uh, compared the marks, and they, they did seem like they matched. Mm -hmm. I had to go with what the detectives were telling me. So for possible. 20 years, I was haunted by that phone call until 2016 when Gary's was arrested. It's also possible the autopsy was not done accurately. And so they called that it an abrasion, possible. but in fact, it actually was that is a, possible. a, a, a the damage left by a stun gun. But I want to understand how this all came together because he was caught with a stun gun with some, with the box. 335 photos of John Bonet. Pictures of John Bonet, uh, um, memorial, vigils. And the aut autopsy photos. And uh, about 19 autopsy photos which had been leaked during the, can you imagine? Why did police catch him with this? Why was he walking around with it? He's. He's fascinated. He, he must have been carrying it around with him constantly. I'm trying to understand why they finally began to take your allegations seriously. Why did they finally pick up uh, Oliva and check out his phone and look, look in his home and find this stun gun? Um, well, uh, I had written a letter to an FBI agent in 2016 and told her about the case and told her about how it haunted me for 20 years. And uh, she was able to contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And within a month, Gary was arrested. So someone did listen to you? Somebody listened to me, yes, finally, yeah. And why do you think he has not been arrested, even to today, for the murder of John Benet Ramsey? I don't know. Uh, detectives have told me over the years it's possible that this may not be a DNA case. However, there is some unidentified DNA Right, of an and there's, male and there are also points. claims from within the police that the DNA was mishandled. Okay, his friend Gary Oliva DNA does not match DNA in John Bonet's underwear. However, nobody's matches, and there's a theory, a very good theory, that that DNA could have even come from where the underwear was manufactured. It was new underwear, so that the fact that his DNA doesn't match. Does means nothing to me. All right, coming up, we're going to see the confession letters that convinced Michael that his friend Gary killed John Benet Ramsey. Plus, how does Gary feel about Michael going public with all of this? We have a chilling phone call. What's next? We're talking about the 1996 murder of John Benet Ramsey. It's been 22 years. Nobody has ever been convicted of killing her. Is that about to change? Michael Vale claims his friend Gary Oliva has confessed to him in letters and phone calls that he killed John Binet. So let's talk about these letters, these phone calls that you have been working on. And just mm -hmm. to bring everyone into the same place, you, you met him in high school. Mm -hmm. We went our separate ways right. after high school. Your father, I guess, had tried to help him. In high school, yes. You're maybe the most normal kid he knew in high school. Mm -hmm. So he kept the link up to you, but you weren't spending a lot of time with him. You have gotten a room full, if I understand correctly, of letters. These are all letters from the Colorado Department of Corrections from him. Yes. And 
I mean, I'm looking at these. This is a lot of letters. And well, you have. <laughs> I, I should, I should uh, tell you that uh, after 20 years of being haunted by that phone call, I couldn't take it anymore, thinking that he's out there hurting other families, hurting other little kids. I couldn't take it. So when he got arrested, it, it took me a while to think of this, but I go, you know, I got to hear this from the horse's mouth himself. I've got to hear what happened, what are the details, who are his accomplices, because I feel that there was other co-conspirators. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You think that more than one person broke into the Ramsey home that night? Yes. And did so without the Ramseys waking up, and none of this gang of men left any DNA, any hair, any fingerprints, any anything? Well, what my Because I just find it very hard to believe that that many men can go in a home and not make a mess. You know, I do too. I, I do too, good point. But however, um, what happened was is that, that the DNA was uh, compromised, is what I was told by detectives. Well, forget the DNA. Uh, that, that the they pineapple didn't leave bowl a was mess, washed, that the kitchen was And they kept their clean. yap shut for 22 years, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that hard to believe based on my theory, or, my experience with conspiracies. Or he may have been alone, who Alone, knows? But yes. in any case, when did you start getting these letters from him? So in 2016, I started writing Gary, and to my surprise, I received a letter back. Then we started writing back and forth. I kept it light, I kept it funny, and, and tried to, then I, then I would, I actually got interrogation methods from some detectives. They told me how to do it. Another detective was coaching me. And I was able to uh, get him to, to write some confession letters. He wrote, actually wrote con 15 different confession letters to me. Okay, so I, I have samples of these, and I just put them on little cards. It's easy for you to read. So okay. Don't mind, read this first letter. Certainly. I never loved anyone like I did John Bonet, and yet I let her slip and her head bashed in half, and I watched her die. It was an accident. Please believe me, she was not like the other kids. Not like the other kids. He's claimed there's other kids that he's killed. He says he has a disorder to kill children. Here's the second letter. John Bonet completely changed me and removed all evil from me. Just one look at her beautiful face, I realized I was wrong to kill other kids. Yet by accident, she died, and it was my fault. So I read these excerpts, but I also read a bunch of these other letters. And there, there are places where he'll say things that I, I just have a hard time getting my arms around. One of them was the fact that maybe accomplices, but also he said at one point, John Bonet Ramsey's parents walked in on him. Mm -hmm cradling her as she was dying. Doesn't that strike you as bizarre? Well, I do believe that he does make things up in some of the letters. However, it doesn't change what I feel that he was involved with the John Bonet murder. I have so, a lot of issues with it. Please. Uh, when you are dealing with someone that may be schizophrenic or have a mental instability, that's one thing. And you've got to factor that in to finding the truth. That's what this is about. What happened to John Bonet? And I can only state uh, extremely firmly that the brother, Burke, did not do this. I really believe that. So it gives a little more credence to an intruder theory, but he says he's murdered other children. What children? When he describes the death of John Bonet, I bashed her, her head got bashed in, it was an accident. Really? How do you do that by accident? And the COD, cause of death, is manual ligature strangulation. She survived for at least an hour after the bashing of the head. So how did that not make its way into his letter? I see it from your perspective and I see what you're saying. However, there was 16 points of circumstantial evidence that I've come up with that matches Gary. Now those knots mm. and those collages he had in high school, he was a fascination with knots. Uh, the cord. He strangled his mother with a cord. Um, he did? With a phone cord, he wrapped it around her neck, and then he let go and left. His mother survived. I, I, are you concerned at all that because of a deeper mental illness, or I say another mental illness, Gary's obsessed with John Bonet and could be confabulating all of this, making it up? It's, it's possible. It, it is possible. However... Didn't he say he wanted to eat John Bonet? Yeah, yeah, he's... I'm sorry, say that again? That's right, Dr. Oz. You tell him. Yeah, he's... he's I know that's... Uh, it's, it's some pretty heavy-duty stuff. He's just talking about cannibalism. He said he wanted to eat John Bonet. 
Gary would break into the University of Boulder, Colorado, and he would, um, there was a skeleton in there, and he wanted to taste what he, human bones would taste like, so he tried biting the skeleton. And he told me how disappointed it was that it was covered with shellac, and he couldn't taste the bone. So you've come to us with a lot of letters. May I very have private, a letter, please, please. Dr. Oz? Just so, one. Yeah, give me more, because I have an issue with the ransom note inside the Ramsey home. Yes. Comparing this now, of course, I'm no expert, but I've handled a lot of cases where I used handwriting analysis experts. And if you look at these, every one is written in all caps. And I've looked at his grammar and his phraseology, and it's hard for me to imagine that this guy who writes in block all caps would use words like attache with an accent grab, with the little choop over the top, and say things like, I'm part of a small foreign faction. I've never heard a man in my life say anything about him as small. Ladies, you know what I mean. <laughs> and I find it very difficult. Yeah, they're all in block. And that letter was flowy, flowery cursive, uh -huh. as I recall. Detectives have told me over the years that that was a, written by a left-handed person, and Gary's not left-handed. I don't believe that Gary wrote the ransom note, and I never did. I believe a co-conspirator wrote that note. So before you get back to the co-conspirator issue, what does Gary think about you telling us going public? Oh, he's not happy. In fact, I haven't heard from him since January 11th. Ew, did you see that? Guys, that? it's a picture of John Bonet. That night, her hair was in, as I recall, two ponytails. We call them pigtails. Mm -hmm. And here she says, rising from the cauldron of the human being stew. And it's a little girl coming out of a cauldron that looks like John Bonet. Yeah. Gary, Gary would show children cooking in his drawings. Real disturbing stuff. Really disturbing Not stuff. Not cooking, cooking children. Cooking yeah, he's children. Yeah, cooking a little girl in a pot. This is actually mild um, from some of the things that I've gotten from him. If you don't think he wants the world to know that he's the guilty mm -hmm. party. Why is he telling you? You know, I'm not sure why he attacked me other than I was the most normal person he knew in high school. And children my love attention. They like my vibe. I just had to tell you that. So I, I actually wanted to hear his voice and, and hear one of these telephone conversations. So uh, you, Michael, you recorded a phone call, which you told him you were going to record. Mm -hmm. with the, this is with Gary Oliva. Take, like, let's take a listen. Call from Gary. An inmate at the Colorado Correctional Facility. Is this the world uh, famous Gary Oliva? The world infamous. What famous? Infamous? Infamous. That's the cross between insane and famous. I wrote you this nasty letter saying, you, you lied to me. I thought we were like brothers. Right. Well, I mean. They're very accusatory. Uh, you're going to show all this artwork to your friends and you're working with the tabloids. So it's obviously awkward. It is awkward. I wasn't working with the tabloids. I was trying to keep this the top secret project for two years to get the phone calls, to get the confession. Have you ever worked with the tabloid? N uh, no, I... Uh, you paused. I've, I've done... Well, I worked with In, In Touch magazine, and I've been approached by uh, several tabloids, and I've, I've ignored their phone calls. Let me talk about you for a second. Do you, do you feel like that you're, you become infatuated by this? You have a room in your house where you have letters like this. You've... you've a lot of resources. Is the obsession an unhealthy one? You've been in therapy over this? Mm -hmm. You have a whole room dedicated to this? Well, I have a room in the house that I keep everything in because I certainly wouldn't want my friends and family to run across this, so oh. I do keep it separate from my living room. <laughs> for sure. But, but as far as the obsession, my obsession is with justice for John Bonet. My obsession is protecting future children that may be harmed by this guy. This guy is definitely not safe for society. Well, I thank you for coming forward. I know this is going to continue to trouble you. And we're going to keep talking about whether Gary Oliva could have done this. So we come up, come back. The man was one of the key investigators in the John Bonet murder investigation. Why he actually believes that Gary Oliva should can be considered, without question, a prime suspect in the murder of John Bonet. His inside knowledge is next.
We're back talking about a new bombshell report that a man named Gary Oliva has confessed to the murder of John Benet Ramsey. Nancy Grace is here, and we're now joined by crime correspondent Melissa Moore and one of the original key investigators in the John Benet case, John St. Augustine. Criminal investigator John St. Augustine has been involved in over 200 death investigations. He's a court qualified expert on computer forensics at both the state and federal levels specializing in interactive crime scene recreations. St. Augustine has been involved with the John Benet Ramsey homicide investigation from nearly its beginning and was one of the two private investigators the Ramsey family hired in 1999 to help clear their names and to find out exactly who murdered John Benet. As a result, St. Augustine was given incredible access to the family, the crime scene, evidence, and to all theories surrounding John Benet's death. He was one of the first proponents of the theory that John Benet's murder was committed by an intruder and continues to investigate evidence he hopes will bring her killer or killers to justice. So, John, why do you think we should pay attention to what we just heard, that this guy, Gary Oliva, could be John Benet's killer? You know, Dr. Oz, I mean, this case has been unsolved for 22 years. I think it's the responsibility of the law enforcement agency to look at Mr. Oliva, right? I mean, we know that he was possibly in Boulder in December of 1996. We know that there's some tie, potentially, right, with evidence like the stun gun. And there's, you know, there's some debatable evidence there about whether or not it's tied to the autopsy. And, you know, some of the obsessions, the writing. And, and the law enforcement agency has to go about and properly vetting all of that information. I agree. It has to be a methodical investigation for many, many reasons. From my point of view as a felony prosecutor and a crime victim, when I go to trial, I don't want the defense to pop up and say, well, what about Gary Oliva? He confessed. What about him? Did you investigate him? And my witness has to say, no, I never investigated. So it could potentially ruin the ultimate prosecution. But I still have a big problem, not so much with the DNA, because I, I don't think that a male, a man, molested her that night. But we have, we have DNA on her long johns. We have DNA in her underwear. Blood, we too. D, yep, we have blood as well. And we have DNA under her fingernails. And, and here, we, you know, in 2008, Bodhi Technology took that DNA, analyzed it, and said it doesn't match the Ramsey family either. That wasn't my issue. My issue huh? is the handwriting. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, the handwriting, first off, handwriting is not a science. You, you know, anybody who's been in the law enforcement profession will tell you that they deal in probabilities. Probably, probably highly probable. Mm -hmm. and, and in this particular case, they found that, you know what, even though it doesn't match Gary Oliva, it doesn't match the Ramsey family either. And again, for me, unless it says highly probable that Patsy or John wrote the note, then I would be looking towards them. But, but the we, big issue I guess we're trying to clarify is could Oliva have been the perpetrator if that handwriting isn't his? Look, we have, we have some evidence in this case that there was possibly more than one person involved. Can we follow that through? You're saying more than one man entered the home and they sat around to write a three-page ransom note and nobody left one fingerprint, one hair, one DNA, no nothing at all, more than Nancy, one man. We, you, you, you cannot disagree with me one bit that this scene was not handled properly. Answer my question, please. Sure, I, I, I'd answer your question. You believe that more than one man I believe that more than one person, in. because we have foreign footwear impressions in the area where her body is found. We have a high-tech boot and an unknown footwear impression. Whose unknown footwear impression is in there? We have somebody who pulled out of that crime scene, items of, of, of evidence. And part of that paintbrush that was used to make the garage to, to, to strangle her, one piece was used to make the garage, one piece was found in, in the tray, and one piece is missing. Where did that one piece go? Where is the tape that was used to strangle her? So there are things that indicate to me that potentially more than one person was involved. Look, we may have a unique opportunity here mm -hmm. to solve an age old crime on this show. We have a man, Michael, who has access to Gary Oliva. Mm -hmm. We have investigators who know what questions to ask. Maybe with your support, we may be able to ask questions that would either trip him up, so Gary Oliva is def definitely not involved, 
or allow him to reveal something that only you have access to because you were so closely involved with the family is investigating this. Really where you're going to get closure in this is that Boulder, the Boulder Police Department or the Boulder District Attorney's Office has to take this particular individual, Gary Oliva, serious and vet him. See whether or not there's any ties between him and, and the murder. Well, my concern is if, if he didn't do this crime, if just from what I've heard today, speaking as a doctor, it's highly likely he will do this again. Right. And that's we all scary. agree on that? Right. That's, and that's really So scary. we don't want him out on the streets. I don't want to falsely convict him of this. That's correct. But I don't see a reason not to take it seriously and then look for other reasons not to let him go, right. just from the pictures that I saw today. Right. We're all on the same page here. Melissa, you've been in touch with the Boulder Police Department. Right. What are they telling you? How are they taking these new confessions seriously? I mean, my, yeah. Michael, his, his 40-year-old friend, has a room full of letters. You've seen a bunch right. of them. I responded to them. I had two questions for them. I wanted to know, have you heard about this confession from Gary Oliva, and what are you doing about it? But also, I want to know, we've, we've solved the Golden State serial killer case with new DNA technology. Are they using that same technology with DNA to solve this case? And so far, they've only said they're aware of the confessions and they're making no further comment. So as far as we know, they could be using the modern technology they of DNA. They retest it yeah. every year or more than every year mm -hmm. using new DNA technology, I've been told. And I'm referring to the FBI. Mm -hmm. Coming up, she studies the minds of criminals. Does she think Gary Oliva killed John JonBenet Ramsey? Her answer is next.